خودی گیزور به هوی می نویانی دست داد. The Iran-Iraq border is one of the most densely mined areas in the world. استاش اسب کدوم دیار قیرانی هر آن وشاخه این خلق شد. دباع الغام کان بن نوزوی کان هور ولا نبا این دام دام شان به بتمات و خیار و شینای و خاطر من دل کانی کم بخیو کم. زور بیشتر نوانی که خواست دستان بیتوا خواست سفر نی دبتوا دبن اشم. اما نیست لقم آن دشک بونیم نسبرم لناتاریان دی بیم ایش بکن. اما همون روز که دین بازسازی میشه، به تمام خوانی لباسیه. Thirty years ago, on the 20th of August, 1988, the longest conventional war of the 20th century finally ended. Iran and Iraq, two highly militarized oil nations, sharing a border stretching almost one and a half thousand kilometers, fought a savage war of attrition, the heaviest fighting seen here in the Zagros Mountains. people perished, and thousands more were left disfigured. Saddam Hussein's opportunist attack on Iran, enfeebled by its fledgling Islamic revolution, soon became a war of national survival when Tehran counter-attacked. Welcome. Mr. Mohammed is the team leader of the team. 
The guns have long fallen silent, the poison gas since lifted, but the soil here remains lethal. Yeah, mostly it's uh, anti-personal mines because it's a hilly site. And if you look at the type of mines, it's anti-personal, AP. These men clear landmines and unexploded remnants of war. I've come to Penjwin on the Iran-Iraq border to see them at work. Penjwin is a very good place to see the people of the country. The people of the country are very good to see the people of the country. بهوي <تصفيق> Funded by the Kurdistan regional government and using equipment donated by foreign allies, the team meticulously comb the earth by hand and with heavily armored machinery. Although they have reclaimed much of Penjwin's urban center, the surrounding hills and farmland remain off limits. The Iran-Iraq border is one of the most densely mined areas in the world, a contamination that has left large areas of the land unusable and families who live here wary of where they tread. The team has been trained to international standards by Western governments and demining organizations. They remain badly under-equipped, however, and progress is slow. This family home is right on the brink of the minefield, and every time mine clearing teams come through, the family is forced to evacuate. The team is clearing this hillside by hand, first wetting the soil so the mines don't move in the powdery earth. Here they are mostly anti-personnel mines, Italian and Chinese made, sold to Saddam when relations were good. Iran also planted mines here, made in the USA, an old pre-revolution stockpile sold to the Shah. Today, they are all banned under international law. It's delicate work. Several of these devices are buried 30 centimeters deep. One careless step could kill. I have a lot of people who are in the world. I have a lot of people who are in the world. I have a lot of people who are in the world. I have a lot of people who are in the world. I have a lot of people who are in the world. I have a lot of people who are in the world. بمكانيك زود ترفع دبته. 
The team are preparing this site for a controlled demolition of these devices retrieved here in the hills, landmines and mortar shells. They have chosen this area as it's far from populated towns and from water sources. We retreat to a safe distance. It's a familiar sound in these hills. Four devices destroyed, many thousands still to find. It's a drop in the ocean. Iraq is a signatory of the Ottawa Mine Ban Treaty. Under its conventions, Iraq should have been landmine free by February 2018. With resources pouring into western Iraq, to help clear new explosives laid by ISIS, the East largely fends for itself. Baghdad isn't helping. As you know, Iraqi government has signed uh, Ottawa Treaty, and uh, they, they say that Iraq will be clear of mine in 2018. But it's not a realistic thing. You know, when we say, we are going to do that, you have to work on that. Unfortunately, Iraqi government never did that, never helped this part of Iraq. Uh, we call it Kurdistan, they call it north of Iraq. They never help Syria. They always uh, look at this area as a different part or as a different country. So, uh, unfortunately, we cannot clear this area even in other 10 or 20 years ago. Motivated by intense civic duty, even patriotism, these determined men chip away at a mountain. If we don't do it, they ask, who else will? It's 30 years since this war ended, and yet devices like this one continue to litter the landscape, and the mine teams tell me until they are cleared, Saddam Hussein is not dead. This is Choman town high up in the Zagros, where thousands of Kurds fled Saddam's onslaught in 1991. Today, tourists from southern Iraq are drawn to the town's mild climate and breathtaking scenery. But Choman is cursed. Like Penjwin to the south, Choman was a battlefield. As the front line moved back and forth over the years of fighting, mines were planted upon mines, bombs dropped upon bombs. The ground is saturated, and when the mountain snow melts in the summer, the mines migrate down the hillside. None of these fields has been cleared to international standards. High in the hills, we meet a young shepherd named Johar. He's 14 years old, but looks younger. He's not worried about stepping on a mine, he says. He's convinced the area is clear. If Johar is proven wrong, he's a long way from help.
This is Mem Rasool. He's something of a local celebrity, known for surviving several blasts while collecting mines and shells for scrap metal. In times of austerity and with local farming crippled by cheap foreign imports, there's good money to be made in harvesting explosives. Kasadam Texu, I'm a hat you know, Ogundane Kepesidebun. Kat you know, Ogundan Pesid, Ogundan, Samu Alhamu, Sheni, any Dasan, the Dasan, the Alhamu, La Takamani. A mutual one period is becoming a Manchaka, Shinae, Kumbamalum, Dalakombe, Wurzbu, Mdalakan, and Barreo, the Daba Alhamakan, and Nazarikan, Wulanaba, and Dam Dam San Babatamato, Hiar, Shinae, Wahati Mdalakan, Kumbahilkum. بس يعني يا كم روز دوام روز شيء سلقوا ريا سيام روز أرغامكم لبن بيدا تقي ولاكم لبه وبا لا يكسر تا تقريبا صار صار صبش تكتم أو زار ناسار بوم يعني من دار مور بندس نبوي شيء كده وا Besides his mobility issues, Memrasul also suffers with a heart condition. Health visitors and occupational therapists are unheard of here in the hills. Here in downtown Choman, it feels like every family has been touched by explosive remnants. Like Memrasul, Many amputees continue with heavy manual work. Without government welfare, it's the only way to feed their families. I'm <laughs> لناتساري مالو من دالخم لوب جيو جاني خم هر دي بيميش بكا لاقي قي اوان دي مايتو برندارج زورا لبوش روجي تاهي واري لير لسا لاقان بو هاويني كاربانيا قرمايا عرقي اكا صوتي برنداري بي لناتساري انش هر دي بيميش بكا اگر حكمة داو كاري كربا عمران بي اندم خمان دينا كربايا نظامها بوا هاتيا على ورش رش من دوري بكا أو جالس دمي هندك موات تدمي بدين زاد بهم قلتي نبراك من وسطان بور أنت ماشي إيشي من كن أجر أمن إيشم زاني كم كوريا كاني من بركنه نك أنقول شش من جانا من ببنى دوري طعم صاحب عائلة ما ونيا زم استانا فيش تيش أم شش من جانا إيش بم دكاني بزي بيلم بس بهم دوري أو عائلة ما هو مدار ناجد هم Iraq, Ham Iran, or Shahani and Pandorum Kildina. Yai Estash is Abka Jundi, Iraq, Irale, Haran of Shahina Halchevish. Aid workers and government officials have come to see us before, the people of Choman say. They listen to our stories, make assessments of our needs, and promise to deliver services. Nothing changes. Ahmed is from Mosul. He's come to the Diana Prosthetic Center in Soran for some adjustments. He lost his leg fighting in the war with Iran 
treading on one of the many mines laid by his enemies and his own side in the Zagros. This center is among the best in the country, accepting civilian and military patients with all kinds of mobility needs. Dr. Majid Ahmed Dewood, the center's director, shows me the entire process, from patient assessment to the workshop, where limbs are carefully crafted to precise measurements. When the new limb is ready, patients are offered courses of physiotherapy and vocational training to help them rehabilitate. State-of-the-art materials like super lightweight carbon fiber and malleable silicon are used to fashion sophisticated prosthetic parts that give the wearer incredible natural movement. But today, the workshop is silent. After a flurry of investment following the 2003 invasion, Baghdad and Erbil have since cut funding to the bone. Now the center can't afford its expensive materials, relying instead on used prosthetics donated from Britain and by mending broken parts for returning patients. This is the first time I was in the United States. 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 I've heard the same from everyone, from mine clearers, from victims, from doctors. There's no money, they're told, no incentive, no interest. Will the people of these provinces wait another 30 years? With enough investment and political will, the Zagros Mountains on both sides of the border could someday be made safe. Until then, the explosives in the ground and the people living among them remain the remnants of a forgotten war. Mm -hmm.